Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop, Bamboo by DeVere. This plays two to four players, takes roughly 90 minutes to play, and is for ages 14 and up. And in the game Bamboo, you are playing as a family cultivating and harvesting bamboo, working with the temple and making sure that you guys do the best job you possibly can to score the most favor at the end of the game. You're going to receive a player board, there's going to be a main game board, you're going to utilize that board to gather food, harvest bamboo, and grow it, utilizing incense as action points, and and then, of course, you'll be gathering and receiving gifts to deliver to the spirits in the temples. At the end of the fourth round, the player with the most favor on this track here is going to win. I'll talk about the setup, how to play, and of course, our review. To begin the setup for the game, give everybody a main game board. This is going to be what they're going to be playing with in the game. Each player is also going to be receiving a piece of bamboo, one of each color, with the specific pot module on the bottom of the bamboo to indicate it's starting as a resource. Give every single player three incense and place it on the pot underneath, and they're going to receive a player marker in their color, which we'll use to determine the different types of actions that they can play in the game. Additionally, you're going to set up the main game board. The first thing you will do is you're going to place all of the victory point or favor point markers on number five to indicate that you start with five points because you can lose them throughout the game. Go ahead and place the main marker, which is the phase marker of the game, on the pine cone. Then take all of the bamboo marked with a diamond, randomly distribute them in the spaces marked on the bottom left hand side of the board. Take the food markers, shuffle them up, and then place five face up in the five marked spaces in the bottom middle. Then you're going to have these. Basically, I'm just going to call them the objectives, and these are going to be the items. The objectives will be shuffled and placed into these little areas here to indicate left, right, and middle. Take out a number based on these spaces and place them down based on the corresponding sides they are located with. Additionally, you'll take the items and you'll take four from the right side and four from the left side and you'll place them down in the marked areas as well. Take the random markers here, these have little pine cones on them, shuffle them and place them on the pine cone in the middle of the board. Then each player who's playing the game is going to put one piece of their bamboo in these four locations on the right hand side of the board. This is a three player game, thusly you see four phases with four of the different green bamboos, purple bamboos, and yellow bamboos. The last thing that you're going to need to do is give somebody the first player marker and then place out four kami or spirits in each of the temple areas. These are going to represent spirits that you're going to hopefully satiate as you play the game. Everything else is just going to go into a bin which are going to be coins which you'll use in the game to purchase resources. After that, you're basically ready to go. The start of the game is very simple. The first thing that you're going to do is a small draft. You're going to take the markers indicated based on the number of players of bamboo, and then you're going to let people draft one. So I could take one blue one here, the next player might take a purple one, the next player might take a green one, and you will do this twice. So once again, I could select to take a red one here, the next player would take a green one here, and finally the last player would take the final blue one. These can change and alternate in color based on the number of players. Now everyone should have six bamboo placed in their areas. You're always going to place purple bamboo in purple slots, green bamboo in green slots, and so on and so forth. The game phases are going to work like this. There are four phases in the game for each round, and after you complete all four phases, you'll move to the next round of play, and once the fourth round is over, then you're going to score your points. The first thing that's going to happen on the acorn is you're going to take the four acorn pieces. Go ahead and give the first player options as to th three of these guys at random. So they'll shuffle these guys up, pick three of them, leave the other one on the acorn, and then they will select one of the actions represented on these, space these spaces here. Once the action has been taken, the next player is going to select one and take that action, and finally the last player will take that and select that action. Then you will move on to incense. Uh, but just before you do, everybody's going to get a piece of bamboo. So we're going to start with four bamboo at the beginning of the game. Your actions are going to be represented by this little token here. This token can be placed on any of the four different colors to represent the bamboo that you're going to use as actions. To start off the game, you can go ahead and select this blue space here. Now take these blue, ba blue bamboo tokens and you can place them in any of the rows here, or columns I should say. And when you do, you'll take the actions represented on the bamboo. 
Additionally, you'll take a number of incense based on the indicated uh, bamboo you've placed. And if you place more bamboo than you have incense, you'll get to only take that many incense. But you have to always take that much if you have that much. I chose blue, so I will choose the blue temple to place the two bamboo, or two incense. So two bamboos placed, two incenses placed based on the color of bamboo, and I'll now get to go ahead and take the actions on the bamboo that I have placed. There are four different main actions in the game. This one here is the way action, or scale. This one is the pot action, this is the food, and these are coins. The only other action is called a star action, which is a wild of any of them. The scale action is basically going to allow you to select up to two actions for the scale or one victory point. The scale actions include taking one of these guys and placing them down based on what they mark on the top left hand side. So if I wanted to take this left hand side uh, objective, I would place it in my left hand side column on the top of my game board. If I wanted to take the middle one, I would place it in the middle section, and then the right, I would place it in my right section. Uh, the other option I can do is score. If I have an objective placed in my board and I have fulfilled the requirements, I can score that action by flipping it over, scoring the points on the favor marker, and placing this little marker, this objective marker, on my fan to indicate that it has been completed. Over here is the pot action. The pot action is going to let you buy one pot. When you buy a pot, you will get a favor, or two, or three, and you will get the indicated item, and you can place it anywhere you want on your board. So if I went ahead and spent three coins, I could take this pagoda and place it on my board in any location that I would like. Every single item is going to have a symbol on it and a number. The number is going to represent the weight, and the uh, item is going to represent what you're going to be trying to get when it comes down to these objectives. The other option, of course, is if I take the pot action and I don't want one of these guys here, or I can't afford them, I can simply take a coin. The food action is the most simple next to the last one here, which is to select one of these pieces of food and put it next to you. You'll be using this to feed your family throughout the game. The last one is two coins. You take two coins. After you have taken your action, and like I said, you, you chose the color, you place those bamboo down, based on the number of bamboo, you placed instance down on the corresponding temple, and you've taken the actions, these bamboo are going to move up based on where you place them, and you will get new bamboo markers with new symbols, and you will place them down on your board. Then the next player will get a chance to go. They will do the exact same thing, choosing their bamboo based on the placement of your dial, and then selecting the incense and placing on the corresponding temple, and then taking the actions, moving them up and gathering them and placing them back on their board. And this will continue this process in this phase until you have no more incense remaining. A couple things to note is, as opposed to doing the double scale action, because you're always going to get to do the scale action twice when you select the space, you can instead take one favor. And if you, of course, select the pot action, you can buy one item, or you can take one coin. Additionally, if you place down, let's say, two green bamboo from the green location, and you do not want to place them on the green bamboo temple, you can spend one coin for each bamboo you'd like to place, any elsewhere on the temple locations to then change where you want to place them for area control at the end of the round. So everybody's now finished their bamboo placement. You will then move to the next phase. Uh, this phase here is going to represent the temples and the kami or spirits. You will look at each of the different temples and based on the number of bamboo for each player will determine whoever has the most, they're going to get that little spirit. It'll start untapped, but you will be tapping or exhausting them as the game progresses. So in this small example, green has two here, no one else has any, so I would get the Tanuki, and I would place it face up on my board area or next to my board area, thusly to be used at the beginning of my next game turn. Then after that, we'll go ahead and get all of our bamboo back, and you can go ahead and place it on your little incense location. Follow this up with choosing to pay to untap any of these guys that you have tapped previously. Most of them are going to cost one or maybe two coins, and some of them are free. Additionally, you'll need to pay food. Based on the items that you have in your area here, you're going to have to pay one food for every single item. And if you don't, you're going to lose favor. So make sure that you have enough food at the end of the game. 
you know, at the end of every round to pay for the amount of items that you have there, or be prepared to suffer a little bit of a loss of favor. After you have fed everybody, then you're simply going to move back this marker to the acorn, and you're going to then once again rinse and repeat. Whenever you take an item, you're going to replenish that item area, and you're always going to get new pieces of um, incense that you're going to be able to use throughout the game, thusly giving you more actions until the very last round. At the end of all four rounds, there are three things you need to pay attention to. One is you're going to need to make sure that you get different types of spirits because you will get two favor for each different spirit you have. So you don't want two Tanukis or two Kappas. You'll want a Kitsune and a Tanuki. That'll give you four points. The balancing act. On your board is going to be a scale. Up here represents the different types of scales, the left, right, and middle. And down here is going to represent balance. So if you have uh, two items worth two here, you're also gonna want two items worth two over here. The middle is wild and you can put anything you want there. But at the end of the game, based on the difference between the sides, that is going to score you two less favor for each difference. So in this case, if I have a total of six and this I have a total of eight, that is a difference of two. Thusly, I will lose four favor at the end of the game because my balance was not correctly adjusted. And um, uh, finally here, you're going to score uh, bonus points, half points, for each objective in the top area that you did not were not able to complete by scoring it during the scale action. So if you had an action here and this represented on the board the correct placement or alignment of those items and it was worth four points, you would get two points instead. So you're still able to score some items even if you were not able to finish them completely. Whoever has the most favor along the track here is going to be the winner of the game. Additionally, if you go past 50 points, you can flip your token over and there's a plus 50 and you can start again at one to continue your progress throughout the game. And that's pretty much the idea of bamboo. Going through, gathering bamboo, placing incense at the different shrines, gathering tanuki or spirits, and being able to use their abilities to hopefully progress you to the point where you have the most favor at the end of the game based on the objectives that you've tried to score. All right, so there's one little thing I didn't mention is you're actually gonna start with three coins at the beginning of the game uh, so yeah, there's there's the setup thing that I, I, I miss. But yeah, you're gonna get coins to start the game. And I, I wanted to just uh, not only state that, but coins are extremely valuable. These are what you're going to be able to use to change your incense from the location you have to place them to a different location, which can give you a higher score in order to get the temples that you need for the spirits. Additionally, if there's a tie in any of these temples, you can basically get them if you if there's a tie based on whoever placed last. So that person, whoever is at the top of the temple, is going to get the specific spirit. So if yellow had two here, and then I placed two here later, at the end of the round, if this is all that's left, we have two yellow and two green. Green's at the top, so green is going to get the spirit to utilize throughout the rest of the game. Food is interesting as well. There are threes, twos, and ones. And if you, you're never gonna get change. So if you only have two items here and you choose a three, you'll have to spend that entire three into your discard pile in order to feed your family. So you try and gather the correct amount of food is important, or of course you can take the highest amount to screw other people over because there might not always be threes there. Additionally, placing down bamboo. Each of these bamboo pieces has a different and represents a different action that you can take. And you can try and take more of a specific action over others if you would like. The wild ones are of course the best. They will give you any type of choice that you would like. And so trying to gather those is important. But what's even more important is to make sure you have a variety of different choices because you might not always want to play three specific actions. There might be other better actions that you could take. And manipulating the bamboo so that you can grow new bamboo and hopefully get the better pieces is going to help you out. This game is all about balance. Balance is the most important thing next to scoring objectives. These objectives here represent the different things you need to do, whether it be to get a sandal and anything else underneath it, but it must be on the right-hand side column, or left-hand side column in this case. So I would place this over here and I'm like, okay, I need a sandal, but I also need any other item, and they both have to equal up to, to, to four weight. Weight or harmony is what it's called. And so I'd be like, okay, I want the sandal here, and I also want this, uh, this bonsai tree. That's three and two, that's, f that's five, that's enough. So I'm able to score this, which is gonna give me three favor at the end of the game, or at, whenever I score, it'll count towards the score at the end of the game. But whenever you place any items on this board here, A, you'll have to always continually feeding it throughout the rest of the game, 
and B, you're not going to be able to move the items, and thusly, if you play something inappropriately, you might be stuck with that choice, whereas you might need something more complex, like these middle ones here, that you need four different locations, up, down, left, or right, and you might not be able to do that based on other placement that you chose to make. Some objectives are pretty easy, just have a lantern or just have a sandal here, but they're not going to score you a whole lot of points and you won't be able to get rid of them until you're able to not only score them and also have the requirement on your board here. Otherwise, sometimes it might be very beneficial because, oh, I've already got two pots, here's two objectives that require pots, take it, take it, next time score and score and bam, I've just gotten four points for one action, which is pretty solid. The items, of course, are always going to be refilling as new ones get removed. At the end of the round, you're going to refill as well. You'll also be doing this phase at the end of the game, or at the end of every, every phase here, where you're going to drop all of these guys down, and the bottom row is going to go away, and you'll be replacing it with new ones. So you're always going to have fresh ingredients, not only from the players buying them and it replenishing, but also from the end of round where the bottom row, the lowest valued stuff that no one bought is going to disappear completely. Coins are very, very important. And to get things like that, spirits are needed as well. In fact, some spirits are very beneficial. This guy taps for two coins and every turn you can spend one coin to untap it. So let's say it's worth one coin every round for free, which is really useful. Other spirits are gonna give you food that will feed your family uh, every round. It might really only be for a coin or two, which can be a lot easier than having to spend an entire action getting food. And other ones are going to involve you using scale actions when you need to. And these guys give you those bonus actions for when your bamboo doesn't have what you need, but you have the tanuki or the kappa or some type of kami that's going to give you what you want. There's bonus actions. And the bonus actions at the beginning of every round are pretty simple. It's either going to be food, scale, pot, or coins. There's the four different actions, and you're going to be drafting these actions every round, giving you an option of getting something before you have to use your precious resources to place down in the temples and to use for different types of bamboo. The artwork, the stylization of the game works great. You feel like you're building bamboo, you're attaching, ba you're growing bamboo in the garden, a new one's coming out, you're putting it into your shop, you're then turning that into incense basically, or in some way it works with incense, and you're using it to satisfy the spirits who benefit you throughout the game, all at the same time of in your shop, keeping balance with the goods and the harmony of everything and like it's all supposed to feel just about right. That said, this game is kind of punishing as well. You can be placing incorrectly, or some of your objectives might never fit based on how you chose to utilize them, so you have to try and make sure that when you choose to place objectives down and items that you pre-plan. Also, keeping harmony is challenging as well. You're going to need to make sure that you have that exact balance at the end of the game, which is, might, might result in you maybe having to choose an objective over balance, or balance over certain objectives. People might take the tiles that you want, and in fact, in a game, especially with three or four players, you're almost guaranteed to lose items and objectives that you want that could have scored you some big points. These guys are so, so useful, and so gathering as many as you can is important. Don't ever try and go after one person uh, or one specific spirit because you're gonna need multiple of them. They're not only worth points at the end of the game, but the earlier you get them, the more value. So the more worthwhile spirits are to have at the start of the game, and then progressively getting more of them for more be beneficial points. Devere, I, I kind of consider them the company that makes really small box games that have a lot of complexity, a lot of components, and a lot of moving parts. The game, while it's is simple enough, is a challenging one. It has a lot of steps, and you need to make sure when you go through each of these four phases, everything that you do is completed. Even just the simple act of taking actions involves you placing bamboo and moving incense and pushing these guys up and taking these and selecting the order of the actions that you choose and turning any spirit you might want in order to get the best possible combination to create balance in your shop, to score victory points, and at the end of the game, not lose any points. So there's a mix of all that stuff. We did a live stream and we did a playthrough of this game. It was a lot of fun, but there's one thing we got wrong. At the very end of the video, I was upset about it because Callie just missed a rule, and that rule is when you buy stuff from these areas here, they replenish. They don't have to, you don't have to wait until the end of the round. The end of the round also gives you a bonus replenish, which after learning that and then playing again, 
uh, I don't have a whole lot of issue with this game. I just, maybe there's some rules, things you gotta pay attention to, and hopefully you've seen enough playthroughs or explanations of the reviews to see how this game works, because sometimes rules might be a little too convoluted. I didn't read the rules for this specific copy, but um, if Callie missed it, it's probably something that could be fixed. Overall though, regardless, Bamboo is a wonderful, beautifully uh, illustrated game. It has great components. It was really well thought out and you feel like you're part of the story, which is all I can ask for games like these. Is this a game I'd play again? Yeah, actually I would. It's a puzzle game and usually I'm not a big fan of puzzle games, but I enjoy this one and there's a whole lot more going on than just the puzzle of Harmony. It's so much action management and placement and there's even like little pieces of like uh, area control in the game. They just added a whole lot to this game, which is great for a small box game. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Bear Bamboo by DeVere. If you're interested in picking it up, there's a link down below in the description. If you're also like, you can go check out our website on filtergamer.com, blog post giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Every Wednesday, we stream on Whatnot and we sell items. There's a link down below if you'd like to see that. We sell games on the cheap. You can also check out, of course, our other streams, which are on 6.30 p.m. PST on Sunday at Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook, where we play games like this one. In fact, we played this one yesterday. So if you want to see some more gameplay, then there you go. The only issue is we got a rule wrong, which is being able to replace these pieces, which was a huge rule, by the way, because it definitely, definitely doesn't help the last player. But after learning that rule now, it's there's no issues. Either way, a great game. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, subscribe to the channel. And as always, I look forward to making some bamboo with you next time.